I thought I'd share it with you. Like like Lee said, if you, you take something, put it up on the shelf, think about it. In Hebrews 10 verse 4, For it is not possible, for the blood of bulls and goats could take away sins. In order for sin to be canceled and destroyed, the host that carried them would have to be of equal, equal value to be one being ransomed and would also have to be destroyed. This is why Yahweh told the Israelites to let the Azazel goat go into the wilderness and did not instruct them to kill it. It was a prophetic foreshadowing that sin was only being temporarily removed from the camp and not being destroyed. On the other hand, because he was a man, Yeshua was of equal value and could pay for man's sin because he had no sin himself. So the Azazel goat could not only take the sin on his shoulders, but could also be killed, taking the sin into death with him. This act on the tree 2,000 years ago killed the power of sin canceling the debt for all who's accept and who accepts it completely. But it does not fulfill the definition entirely. For once a payment has been made, the new owner is supposed to take possession of the item that was purchased. This taken possession does not take place until he comes for his bride in the second coming. It is, it is his return for his bride during the fall feast that bring about this final redemption and the final fulfillment of kafar. Atonement is always connected to redemption. They are, they are parallel ideas. Yom Kippur is the final judgment day of the people on earth where his people are forgiven, redeemed, ransomed, and taken into his chamber for relationship, and those who are not his are judged. This is not the same event as the great white throne judgment that happened at the end of the thousand year millennial reign, but is a separation judgment nonetheless. If you look at the word kapar, kapur, they are spelled kaf, pe, resh. In the ancient paleo hieroglyphic Hebrew language where every letter was originally a picture before it morphed into the modern block letters. This word has tremendous meaning. The letter cough was a bent hand like a hand on top of the head that is anointing someone. It means an anointing hand, specifically the palm. Pei was a picture of the mouth and it still means that today in modern Hebrew. Resh was a picture of a head and also still has the same meaning of head or beginning. It's also where we get the term Rosh Hashanah, the head or beginning of the new year. So when you put it all together, Kippur actually means the anointed hand and mouth brings about a new beginning, or it could mean the anointing hand and mouth brings about an anointing head. In either case, we are getting a major glimpse into the true meaning of Yom Kippur. Although Yom Kippur is definitely all about Messiah, the deeper and original intent of Yom Kippur was to pay a ransom and redeem mankind. It was to set free by word and by deed, by mouth and by hand. It was the word of Yahweh that came in the flesh. It was his word that was spoken and brought the universe into existence. People do not even understand Yeshua is the creator. John, first chapter of John tells you all about it. All about it. It was the word through the mouth of Yahweh and the blood that dripped from the hand of Messiah that allowed those who believe in to be given new beginnings and have their own head anointed. this prophetic foreshadowing that all above provides, but let's go deeper and still pass the theology and get to the heart of the Father. He is not just trying to fulfill prophecy and show us amazing connections in his word. He is a father and we are his children. 
and a good father is always trying to teach his good, good characteristics to his children by example. With this in mind, what is Yahweh trying to teach his children through this word Kippur in all its fullness? If the two greatest commandments are to love Yahweh with everything in us and to love our neighbor as ourselves, then everything he does will fit into those two categories. So how do we fit Yom Kippur into those two commandments? Kafar means cover, cancel, forgive, atone, purge, reconcile, cleanse, appease, put off, pardon, redeem and ransom. Those words all deal with people. Yahweh is showing us how to deal with people. In scripture, we are commanded to forgive one another, to pardon one another, to cancel each other's debts when we need to, to purge from our lives all bitterness and resentment, and to cover one another when we are found in sin. True love pays for someone's debts without them knowing what you're doing. Didn't Yeshua pay for our debt without us knowing what he was doing until it was done? We are to reach out our hand and proclaim with our mouth that we forgive one another, pardon one another, cancel the debt towards one another. When we do this, it truly brings about the final letter and the word Kippur, which is a new beginning. Yom Kippur is not just a reflection of our, on our sin and what Messiah did to set us free. It is not just a day of fasting and prayer and getting right with Yahweh. Yom Kippur is a lifestyle. We should be atoning for others just like he atoned for us. Just like Messiah, the judgment belonged to his father, but the action of forgiveness belonged to him. We are to forgive and truly cancel other debts and let the father do the judging. Perhaps he will bring restoration, or perhaps the consequences of that sin will require a different outcome. In any case, we are to lay ourselves down on the cross and look for opportunities to truly be messiahs for others. You're supposed to walk in his footsteps. What did he do? He forgave us. We are supposed to do the same. It's easy to love those who love you, but who can love those who hurt you? This is what Yom Kippur is really all about. In Matthew 18, there is a, parallel, a parable of the unforgiven servant who was forgiven a debt of 10,000 talents. After he was forgiven, he chose not to forgive the one who owed him a hundred dirii and put him into prison instead. When the original master found out that this had happened, he called his former servant into his chambers and said, you wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me to. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? He sent the ungrateful man to the torturers until he could pay all he owed. This story illustrates what Yom Kippur lifestyle is really all about. There was a debt owed a payment made, and a person ransomed out of prison. How often do we hold grudges, allow bitterness to eat us from the inside out, and hold on, hold others hostage to the prisons of our minds until they pay the debt they owe us? I know I've done this more than one occasion. I'm sure you did too. But let us not just celebrate Yom Kippur this year. Let us live the power of Yom Kippur each and every day of our lives, looking for opportunities to open prison doors and set the captives free. The hour of trial is upon the household of Yahweh. Right now. Will we release those we are holding hostage or will we continue to demand payment for all they owe? Messiah died for sinners. 
We are to be like Messiah and need to die for those who have sinned against us. To, de to live as Messiah and to die is a gain. Death rips the veil across our hearts and lets the love of Yahweh come flowing in. Forgive and pardon and die. That's the power of Yom Kippur. Yeah, we bless.